I had three nicknames, Wall Hog, Flopper, and Green Lane Demon. I was the ultimate dominator of the last lane in the pool, reserved exclusively for underclassmen and those yet to hit puberty. While my teammates elegantly leapt off the diving blocks, I plugged my nose and braced for impact as my belly slapped the surface of the water every time I jumped off. I had no idea what I was doing, but one thing was for sure. I was North Creek's worst swimmer. Hello everyone. My name is Amy Tran and I'm a graduating senior here at North Creek. I've spent the last four most developmental years of my life at North Creek High School and have traveled all across Seattle and Portland for the other clubs I've been involved in. And I think I've built a pretty solid understanding of high school culture along the way. Procrastination gives you superpowers. Mosachi is the best tool to calculate the lowest grade you can get on your test without failing the class. Most importantly, you must master the art of doing enough, but not doing too much. It sounds cliche, but this is because what we high schoolers worry about most is what others will think of us. Whether it be our peers, our teachers, college admissions officers, or even people we've never met before. We exist in a microcosm of the real world where we're constantly surrounded by people we've known since kindergarten that we see five days a week for 12 years. Our only real exposure to the outside world is basically social media, where we constantly witness the highlight reel effect and we see people's mistakes amplified online. Understandably, the seemingly worst way to make an impression is by failing. I wish I could pretend to be above that, to be thinking on the meta level where I'm self-aware, more mature than my age, intellectual, better than everyone else, and very humble. But throughout most of high school, this was not the case for me. But my story changed when my senior year came around. As I mentioned, I'm a graduating senior here at North Creek, but I'm actually not quite on track to graduate right now. There's one thing that holds me back, and it's gym credit. So this year, I needed to participate in two sports to graduate. And the only one that I could fit into my schedule was swim. Unfortunately, I did not know how to swim. And so without knowing how to, I dove into a series of near-death experiences every weeknight at 8 p.m. And this didn't come easily. I hid in the bathroom during hard sets. I faked illness before races. And once, while I was wearing a swimsuit at a swim meet, I told the people that I didn't know how to swim. Fearing the embarrassment of my peers, witnessing my potential failure, I simply avoided the opportunity for it but I eventually forced myself to compete at the third meet of the season. And when I swam, I won first place by 30 seconds. That's not true. <laughs> Don't clap, I lied. <laughs> I inhaled gallons of that public pool chlorine urine water and choked on air each yard, only to get up and be knocked back down for 49 more yards. And to top it all off, after that, I had to swim two more races and do the same thing. And so I quickly became a meme amongst my friends as my swimming and drowning videos circulated. And I was so humiliated that I never wanted to come back to practice because of how epic my fail was. But I came back anyway. Each time I returned was a victory in and of itself. If I hadn't practically seen the light at the end of the tunnel, I wouldn't have had to learn how to breathe underwater properly. If I hadn't rammed my head into the wall, I would have never had to learn how to sort of flip turn. <laughs> New solutions or improved performances rarely occur unless something goes wrong in the first place. The successes that follow are what people will remember. And it's easy to say we appreciate failure, but hard to actually do it. So I've broken it down into two steps to help you and to remind myself. And I call it failure to success. The first step is redefining failure. One of the most common misconceptions about it is that it's the end all be all for us. But truly what it is is just a step to the process. Making mistakes is redirection. And for example, since only two of my audience plants are laughing, I know what not to say the next time I do a speech. We fear failure because we don't understand it, but the true fear should be of defeat, which isn't coming in last place, but not coming at all. This is how you'll stop fearing inevitable failure 
which comes before success, which leads me into my next step. Oh, yeah, that was a failure. I forgot to click the slide. Um, failing successfully. As Albert Einstein, Mr. E equals MC squared himself once said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. When you fail, you need to reflect for it to be worth anything. What am I doing wrong? What can I do better? This is how the mistakes you made will be of value to you as you can recognize where to grow and do better when you try again. Consider asking for help, observing your performance and others, and changing your methods. When failure does come, cut down your sulking, self-pity, why did I do that, that was so cringe time. Use it to pick up the leftover dignity and try again. It was with this process that when I was forced to swim the hardest stroke, breast stroke, at my senior night meet, I didn't suddenly have a crippling stomach ache when race time came. When that race came around, I flopped into the pool, drank more water than the pool drain does after closing, and was one of the first in the pool and the last to get out. But through these two steps and my refusal to quit, I won last place. It was through this continued series of failures that I realized what truly brought my successes all throughout high school. I'm attending the University of Pennsylvania in the fall, but that was only after not getting into the school that I applied to two months before and working harder to compensate. Sometimes I lay awake and um, lie, look at my ceiling and think about how I once served as esports club president, which was forcefully disbanded. But had I never gone for that position, I would never have had the courage to hold the leadership positions that I do now. I once even failed to bench the bar at the gym. And that taught me that I may not be that type of athlete. But now, I'm a Just Dance master. High school does feel like the worst place to lose. But the truth is that we should be failing the most now as we discover ourselves. We should learn our passions and transform our weaknesses into strengths and develop into who we should become without hindering ourselves because of what we could become in the process. As I learned through SWIM, I culminated my season at the banquet where I unexpectedly won an award. No, it was not MVP, but it was something that was indefinitely more valuable to me, most improved. Swimming requires drowning. Belly flops can begin new waves. So when your classmate runs for a position and fails, congratulate them for having the courage to try. When you ask your hallway crush for their Snapchat and they reject you, at least they let you near them in the first place. When you shoot for a goal and you miss, at least you got the ball near the net. When you fail, remember it's a part of your journey to greatness. So when you win, thank all the times you didn't. Thank you. <laughs>